So this is Olivia's case. So this is Olivia. And this is Olivia's mother. And um, so I'm happy to share this case. So Olivia has been experiencing depression since a while back, but she was in denial. She was badly bullied as a kid. The depression was more under the spotlight when her brother passed away. Olivia feels as if she can never be happy. She doesn't feel believe in herself. She's exhausted emotionally and physically, and she can't sleep enough or too or can't sleep enough or sleep too much. She was on Prozac and it was working first, and but then it stopped working. It turned her mean. Uh, this was, you know, her behavior at that point was very unlike her. She was always very kind, sweet, and loving. Sometimes a little thing can go wrong and it will trigger her depression. Olivia feels as if she is broken and a failure. She has thoughts of suicide, but will never carry them out because she has so many people that like and love her. My parents already lost one child. I wouldn't want them to lose another. I hate the rain. I don't like when it's dark and gray outside. Yeah. Spring's coming, right, guys? So this is this is Olivia's skin, all right. So you see the first picture on the left. The arrow is pointing to her deep limbic system. Uh, remember, white represents high activity. Her deep limbic system is on fire. It's really active. It's on fire. It's cool to say that, say stuff like that. Yeah. So deep limbic system is very active. Um, uh, it just sort of stands out at me. And I, I don't I don't know if I would have known that just by you know, talking to her. Olivia first experienced anxiety when she used to perform with the band or play the flute. Uh, she's always been self-conscious about what people thought about her. She constantly feels nervous, panics, and fears that no one will ever be able to figure out what is wrong with her. Her anxiety has become worse since it first started and feels anxious 24-7. She can feel calm at times, but will start becoming anxious about something out of nowhere. Triggers for anxiety are when she has to work, when she has work to do, have a deadline coming up, and when technology fails on her. She had a rough semester at college. She was going through a lot with therapy, schoolwork, friends, and relationships. She's unable to, unable to turn off her mind uh, before she goes to bed. She'll be thinking about different things constantly. When Olivia has a panic attack, she will literally freeze. She needs to lie down and just cry it out. The attacks usually last about an hour, and then she needs to rest the entire day because she's exhausted. So, see the difference? Again, white is high activity. Red is low activity. Uh, she's she's telling me this, and I'm like, okay, you have panic attacks, and I'm like, okay, you have panic attacks, you have anxiety, is there? It's like, wow, we see it, and we're gonna treat it, right? So we use some abuse bar, we use some some lamictal, and it's life changing, right? Identify the sort of problem, think about your automatic thoughts, label the ant as specifically fortune telling, and then talk back to it, right? Not you don't have to talk out loud, but you know, I mean. And then you can try things like diaphragmatic breathing. So, um, so just a quick tip on breathing. You guys may know this. You guys may breathe better and better than I do. I tend not to breathe. Um, you know, when I when I inhale, I tend not to push my stomach out. Um, I've had to work on this. So learn to to sort of when you inhale, to push your stomach out, you know, like babies do or, or young puppies do. Um, by doing this, you're gonna bring your your lungs down. Right, you're gonna get more oxygen in, and you have more oxygen. You're gonna perfuse or, or give blood to your organs, and it's gonna just gonna help you. It's gonna help you on the cellular level. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do. And then think about the 18, 40, 60 rule. So when you're 18 years old, um, you're worried about what everyone thinks. When you're 40 years old, you don't care what anybody thinks. And when you're 60 years old, you realize that no one really cares, right? So think about that rule, and then learn how to deal with conflict. Deal with it. Like go, go for it. Like it's okay to have some conflict in your life. It doesn't make you a bad person. You know, don't give in to anger because it makes you um, uncomfortable. I, I'm very bad with with conflict. It's something that I'm working on. Um, don't allow opinions to control how you feel about yourself. Say what you mean and stick up for what you believe is right. Maintain self control. You know, don't don't make too much of a scene, but. Maintain some sort of civility uh, and use your prefrontal cortex, right? Be kind if possible, but you know, be firm. That's okay, right? So, in terms of nutrition, you want to eliminate caffeine and alcohol. This can make matters worse. You may, with the alcohol, you may temporarily decrease activity in your basal ganglia, but then um, there's this rebound effect. 
you, know, you, you, you may want, your basal ganglion, you may experience more anxiety later. So try to eliminate out caffeine and alcohol. Um, the balanced diet, it doesn't allow you to get too hungry. Cause, you know, the hypoglycemia can precipitate anxiety and affect the center. GABA, CAVA, valerian, B-complex, B6, the periodoxin is good, GSPAR. The beta blockers uh, are good in low doses. 